with that, I give you the floor. Hi, everyone. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, I see a lot of uh, known faces here. Uh, I'm, gl uh, I'm glad I see you, uh, and I'm glad you come to our presentation to see how we are doing with OpenSeeds 2.1. What's, what are the, la uh, the latest um, uh, uh, features that we've been working on? So, real-time uh, clustering with OpenSIPs. Well, what, why do we need a cluster? That's obvious. We want to do high availability. We want to have our platform as scalable as possible. We have to ensure that um, our platform has uh, geographic distribution and everything is w uh, and all these instances should be uh, should behave as a whole, as a single, big, huge platform, right? Everybody wants that. In order to do that, we have to somehow make sure that all those instances, all those single instances, share some data. Um, they could be doing it using a shared database, or ideally, there should be a mechanism that uh, will make these nodes communicate. Uh, to one another in a very uh, efficient way so that we don't really um, need to install and add some um, latency to a shared database. Well, that's exactly what we've done uh, with our OpenSeeds clustering. We've provided a very efficient communication um, clustering uh, layer, which is built on top of a custom protocol a very efficient protobin, we call it protobin because it's binary, uh, so we don't, you don't really need to parse anything, everything is um, serialized in a very, very efficient manner. It's built over TCP, so uh, it is, uh, you don't have to deal with any, any retransmission or stuff like that, the TCP layer will ensure that uh, data is properly sent. And it also uses some application um, some application data such as um, such, uh, such as link state, such uh, heartbeat pack packets between uh, these nodes in order to uh, in order to s all the nodes uh, to see the entire uh, the entire topology of our cluster. And you'll see that it's very simple to use. But let's see what are the features, why we are looking into uh, this clustering model and why we are doing it for, um, w why are we investing so much, um, so much time in it. So again, imagine that you have a cluster that can have any topology. So for example, you might have nodes with, um, spread in the US and you can really have fast lanes uh, through each other. So you can always do a full mesh. You some, you'll end up with something like this, right? Uh, one of the main features of the clustering module is link re redundancy. So for example, um, having such a cluster, if, oh, sorry. if one link goes down, then this node will still be available, even though there, uh, there's not a full mesh here because we'll be able to, uh, to send or use any of this information through this node. So this is one of the main features that, uh, that the clustering module pr uh, presents. Another one, this is ba uh, basically a high, uh, use case. We, we've been working on the cluster module to, do, to ensure high availability between nodes. So imagine that we have here a customer that is using this node to make a call, but suddenly this node goes down. Well, using the clustering and the dialogue uh, replication features, we, we are able to easily move the call on this, uh, on this guy or whatever uh, node is closer to the, to the caller. This is done automatically. You don't really need to do anything. Simply set up a cluster. Anycast, well, it's the same thing. You have here a, a caller is calling to this node. Uh, but somehow this node uh, becomes to be very, very loaded. So the Anycast uh, algorithm puts it out of the route and moves the route over here. Well, having a dialog replication in the cluster, you will be able to easily move the, the dialog on a different node. Again, this is done instantly uh, and without any further action. Another thing, you would like to do a platform-wide uh, calls per second limitation. That's it, that's really easy because all these nodes share the uh, all the uh, the calls per second um, information. All you have to do is set up a cluster and ask the rate limit module to uh, 
to replicate its counters. That's it. And as I said, everything is very, very simple. All you need to do is, um, w uh, all you need to do if you want to scale, you simply power up a new node, you link it to one, uh, to an existing node, and that's it. It will start by itself to connect to all the other, uh, to all the other, um, all the other links as, f as much as possible. If that is possible. If it's not, it will be alone like this one. Doesn't matter, it will still be part of the cluster. So as I said, when inserting a new node, all you have to do is find out the network topology. You can do that uh, by looking into the database to see uh, how each node is provisioned and you can get all the nodes from there. Or you can simply connect to a user node and start exchanging information with that uh, node, like topology information, because you might have some nodes within you. So in, in this case, uh, this happens when, for example, two clusters merge. Um, and after, after you connect the new node, it will start to query all the other nodes that he will be able to talk to in order to create a very, very fast, let's say, the fast lanes to, this, um, to, this, to all the nodes. As soon as the connection is done, it will start pulling information from one of the nodes. It doesn't have to be uh, a single node. Each, node. each new node can sync from a different node, which, which uh, whatever one is uh, less, uh, less busy. And once the one is fully synced, then it, it will be able to also replicate the new data to other, uh, other nodes or, of course, uh, will start making, uh, will start um, uh, processing traffic. But that's it. That's as simple uh, as possible. All you have to do when, when you want to add a new node, just power it up, link it to an, uh, to an existing node within the cluster, and that's it. Everything will work out of the box. Well, uh, so these are the features that we've been, uh, the cluster feature, let's call them, that we've been working on. But let's see some practical examples that we, uh, we have done. And I will ask my colleague, Liviu, to present you. Thank you, Razvan. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Liviu. And uh, I'm going to start off by saying uh, that uh, Razvan had an interesting uh, all throughout uh, idea that everything is simple, right? So. Uh, all about the cluster is simple, and this is kind of the same thing that we um, had in mind when uh, we decided to tackle this distributed SIP user location problem, which, um, as you all may know, it's not uh, something new, and people have had to solve uh, or deal with it in one way or another uh, for so many years now. And uh, we just want to make it easy. We want to simplify this process as much as possible in uh, in the 2.4 release. So this is kind of what uh, people have been looking for. Some customers want to geo-distribute their uh, SIP user locations. Others uh, enjoy or prefer to, they have very volatile subscriber numbers. They might want to easily add new servers or scale them uh, up or even down in some cases. A lot of them start worrying about high availability, what uh, due to you know different company politics or uh, policies, uh, and they have to make sure that uh, their service has certain uh, uptime requirements and whatnot. And uh, I guess the first one uh, is something that everybody worries about and uh, kind of can't get past it these days. The, the natural versa problem and the fact that pretty much all of your user agents are going to be behind some sort of NAT device. And uh, last but not least, the keep alives that have to be originated by the platform to keep those bindings alive. So putting all of that together, uh, we kind of ended up with two uh, designs. Everything is... Uh, mentioned on the website. I'm going to give the, the links somewhere later. But for now, let's uh, go with the first one. And this is for ideal for setups where you have multiple locations. And uh, we, we are going to use the cluster to handle all of the c 
communication and synchronization between them, uh, contact sharing and all that. Um, pretty much uh, we can have the advantage now to skip the SIP part and just pack everything, all the uh, you know minimal information into these kind of metadata packets and uh, thus share the state across the whole cluster. Uh, we have the advantage of being able to resize any uh, of these locations and uh, maybe, you know, even in a highly dynamic way without any kind of data corruption ensuing. And uh, again, this is for, uh, for the multiple locations kind of setup. And the best part about it is that the script does not change at all. So if you're familiar with the save and lookup primitives of the OpenSIPs and Kamayo uh, type of flavor, that's going to be the same even in a distributed fashion. Just save the subscriber, the, the cluster will do everything, you'll propagate it to all the locations, and uh, same with the lookup. It will handle uh, routing. And uh, Okay, so I guess there's four more minutes left. Um, so this is the, what I was talking about, the routing, um, where if we are, so uh, let's say Alice has registered and her state has been propagated all throughout the cluster and now Bob calls her in C because that's his local pop. Uh, C cannot directly reach A, although it knows about it, right, due to the net. So there's, uh, as I was saying, the, when you do look up from the script, uh, everything will be ma automatically handled and uh, actually the SIP invite here will be translated into a cluster packet and then uh, it will reach Alice. Uh, and regarding the second uh, idea, the NAT keep lives, they will all be handled, I mean only on the A side. Although these guys know about Alice, pop, uh, yeah, pop B and C, they will not do any pinging. And uh, that pretty much sums up the first model. Um, and the second one is where, uh, while the first one was more focused on geodistribution, this one is highly focused on a big, large deployment with, uh, with a big bunch of subscribers for which you kind of don't want to handle all of this data inside your open source boxes. Um, and you'd rather outsource this to some database that offers, you know, proper sharding and uh, ways for you to scale both your reads, your write, whatnot. And uh, the, again, a good, si uh, good advantage of this design is that you can have an SBC in front of it and uh, pretty much treat all your data as uh, j just duplicated inside the cluster. So to sum this up, uh, again, we, we have all the location data in the database. There's no longer, uh, we no longer store it in the OpenSIPS memory. You can resize your platform, uh, whichever layer, cluster layer, add or remove boxes on the fly. Same with the database. And uh, all right, a couple more minutes left. And the scripting stays the same. Again, this is all documented on the, on the website under the development tab. We highly encourage you to uh, go there, you know, check out. There is a lot more, uh, it's quite verbose. And you can get a lot more info there. Uh, this is a quick uh, a quick uh, run through the the net traversal net traversal behavior for the uh, for the DB enabled cluster. Uh, we look up so the invite hits the platform. Uh, we end up doing the DB lookup, and from this point we can route it out through uh, through the SBC that has the, the NAT binding. And with regards to the keep alives, we can structure our queries in such a way that each box only pings its own slice of subscribers. So again, there's no 
extra pinging going on and we minimize the number of options that we need to to push out in order to keep the, uh, the subscribers alive. So to sum everything up, there is a quite a big bunch of stuff coming up in the 2.4 release with regards to clustering. We we have a lot of things going on with the uh, distributed user location, cluster self-discovery, and uh, dialogue syncing. And uh, please, uh, you can easily contribute or you know invalidate refute whatever we we say because th there's no uh, right or wrong it's, it's just a matter of uh, so, you know making as much people happy as possible fitting in with as many requirements scenarios as we can right so uh, I've been I've been leave you Rezvan and uh, we Encourage if you want to find out more about OpenSIPS or uh, learn more about uh, our the ecosystem around it. Please visit. Uh, you can uh, enroll with the summit that's going to take place in May. There's uh, some discount things going on in there. You can check the slides out later and make use of it. Pretty sure that will expire pretty soon. So make sure you, yeah. Okay. If uh, that, that was it, if you have any more questions, I don't think we have questions. Yet. Oh, we we're past. Okay. Yeah, we'll be around. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. Guys.